Hey, so I wasn't really planning on making this video, but some of the changes in the UI of both macOS and iOS announced at WWDC yesterday were interesting enough to actually take a brief look. Let's start with a non-design thing though. You probably know that I'm not a fan of calls. I famously had seven Zoom calls in all of 2020 and I tried to avoid calls whenever I can. I believe that they are just a waste of time and 99% of the time you could just use an email bullet list to solve that same problem a one hour meeting could solve. But next to my love of meetings, there is this whole Zoom thing, because Zoom is a very badly designed app in terms of the performance. It takes about four or five minutes to load on my M1 MacBook Pro. It's hogging the resources, the CPU, the RAM, it's just horrible and I don't really want to use it. Right now Apple announcing FaceTime links and the ability to actually schedule FaceTime calls in the future and have people from Android devices or Windows join in onto those calls using a web browser, this is gonna be quite revolutionary. One of the very first things that I noticed was some Aurora backgrounds in some of the health app elements. And it's really nice to see them, especially mixed with some glass morphism and some minimal tables down below. This is a very nice approach and it's also showing that my trend setting abilities are still on par of what's going on in the industry. It kind of resembles the modern minimal style that Diana created recently. It doesn't really use emojis, but Apple does use memojis, which is basically kind of like a halfway step towards that anyway. Having a stacked news feed of all your notifications is a pretty good idea. It kind of reminds me of how Flipboard presented information and it was pretty revolutionary nine years ago. But first of all, let's talk accessibility, because as you know, accessibility is deeply baked into iOS and you have a lot of features that you can use to make the designs or the interfaces more accessible. So if you take the background color of that glass background under that new newsfeed notification and the font size and the color, you'll see that it doesn't pass the WCAG rules, but it doesn't have to because you can just go into the settings and if you're having vision problems, you can just set them to be high contrast. That's pretty simple. And this is the path that I think is right. And there is a lot of fight in the accessibility industry or the subgroup of this whole UX industry that every interface should be accessible for everyone. And I don't believe that's the case because if we go with super high contrast for everybody, many people will actually have a worse experience instead of a better one. So the best approach is to allow people to modify the experience to match their needs. I really like that shared mouse cursor and dragging and dropping a file from an iPad through a MacBook onto an iMac was just kind of mind blowing. It was just too cool to be true and it was something very Apple-like. And then there's this new redesigned Safari. They are reducing the browser Chrome, which is, you know, all that browser elements up the top to the bare minimum. So you'll have more space to actually view the website and that's great. But also that design of that new Safari is very minimal in the styling and combine that minimal with the super skeuomorphic icons of that system, it looks kind of cool actually. So maybe the pendulum swinging between skeuomorphism and flat design every seven years is going to actually stop in the middle for once. But that new view of those little rectangular tabs on the top with just the square fav icons or website icons in them is gonna make those fav icons very important. So people are gonna probably be bumping the contrast into insane levels and using clashing colors to actually catch attention. And I don't know if it's good yet. We'll see. And also, I really like how the generally minimal iOS apps have some of those very skeuomorphic features like accelerometer based shadows and lightning on those home keys on those cards in your wallet. It kind of looks cool, but at the same time, it keeps that design minimal with like a little bit of a flair. And I think people are gonna love this. And the weather app is something that was to be expected because weather apps are for some reason always skeuomorphic. All the successful ones are very skeuomorphic. And this is probably because we like to kind of connect the weather on our phone to what's outside the window. It needs to look realistic enough. So right now, even the raindrops are actually touching the interface element as they fall if it's raining outside. This is pretty cool, but it's not really that revolutionary. And I think that the maps getting those landmark elements of the city in those nice little cute 3D 
is a good idea and a good approach. And also it's a lot different than those kind of semi computer generated weird version that some of the other mapping services show. They kind of look like a video game, but it might be useful for drivers to reorient themselves on the road using the depth and the height of elements and the landmark items themselves. So this is really cool and pretty revolutionary too. And let's not forget the privacy features because this is an outright war. That's a declaration of war on all those data driven companies because Apple right now will be allowing you to block pretty much everything coming from the outside, including a built-in VPN in iOS and macOS. And yeah, the future is going to be pretty interesting. So what did you think about the conference? What feature did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, throw a paper airplane and have a nice day. Cheers. Uh -huh.